Loop Radio, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. I'm Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, I am thrilled to have Eddie Johnson back with me. Eddie is the same Eddie of the famous Eddie's Weather Wag, and that is the topic of our discussion today. But before we jump in and talk about what's going on with the Weather Wag, I do want to take a moment, as always, to just give a recognition and a little thanks to our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes & Associates, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners and viewers to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And with no further delay, I would like to introduce Eddie Johnson. Eddie, welcome back to Great Loop Radio. Good afternoon, Kim. It's wonderful to be back. Yeah, and uh, you know, the headline is Eddie's Weather Wag is coming back, and it's coming back very soon. So um, we're going to jump into exactly what that is, because I know a lot of you have never heard of that. Uh, but first, uh, I'm going to ask Eddie to tell you a little bit about himself, but I know he's very humble. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Eddie. Um, Eddie volunteered to do the weather wag um, as it's, it's kind of the person who instituted it and called it something different was Tom Conrad. And Tom Conrad had his weather musings for many years that helped loopers find a suitable weather window to cross the Gulf. And um, as Tom's health was failing, he kind of groomed Eddie to take that over. And Eddie graciously did that on a volunteer basis for five years before stepping aside a couple of years ago, leaving a big hole that we really uh, did not fill. And partly because of those efforts, but also partly because Eddie and his wife, Linda, serve on our advisory council and because they have both presented many times at many of our events and are some of those loopers that we know we can turn to with whatever we need. And they're always there to support the association and their fellow loopers. And because of that, Eddie and Linda were honored with the Ron and Eva Staub Volunteer of the Year Award last year. Um, so there really is nobody else like Eddie and, and Linda. Um, and I know he would have left out most of those details if I asked him to tell, tell us about himself. So well, I probably, probably have just have. embarrassed him. Um, but really, you deserve um, the shout outs, Eddie, because you have been so helpful to the organization and literally have helped um, probably thousands of loopers to identify what for them is a suitable golf crossing window. And that's what the weather wag is all about. But let's start off. Tell us a little bit about, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about you and Linda and your Great Loop adventures so far. Okay. Well, um, I, I think it probably is important to let everyone know that Linda and I have uh, been AGLCA members for uh, 15 years now, which pretty much matches the number of years that we've owned our one trawler that we've owned uh, for the past 15 years. Uh, Spiritus is her name, and uh, she's a Grand Banks 36 Classic. Uh, we have done the loop twice, um, the first time in 2012 and 2013, um, and then again in 2017 and 2018. Um, Spiritus was a, a wonderful boat to do that in. Um, we were going to start our third loop uh, when COVID came around, and uh, as well as the need for uh, Lynn and I to start kind of taking care of our 90 year old mothers. So um, uh, we didn't stop uh, the doing uh, the weather wag uh, because of any perceived uh, uh, non interest uh, in it. Uh, we really uh, stopped it because of, well, life kind of got in the way. Uh, and quite frankly, after five years of getting up at 4.30 in the morning, uh, to do the weather wag way it used to be done, uh, the way my predecessor, as you mentioned, Tom Conrad, had set it up. Uh, getting up that early in the morning for uh, five crossing seasons uh, got a little got a little wearing on the body, so I needed a little bit of a break. But but we're back now and uh, uh, hoping to serve those of you that uh, need the assistance in finding those weather windows to get across the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, and we so much appreciate your willingness to come back and do this again. Um, before we jump into what the weather wag actually is, tell us a little bit about Spiritus. Um, I think you mentioned kind of the basics, but I want you to kind of set that stage because your sure. boat specifically does play a role in 
your crossing advice, because obviously that's yeah, your experience. Yes, it does. Um, you know, back uh, years ago, like I said, we've been uh, AGLC members for 15 years now. And when we first started, um, a lot of us uh, had what we call classic crawlers, the uh, diesel driven, uh, non turbocharged, uh, 30, 40, 45 foot trawlers uh, with sometimes single engines, sometimes dual engines like uh, our uh, Spiritus has. Um, diesel driven, it really pushed you along at normal trawler speeds, which was around eight to 10 miles an hour. Um, so that's what uh, the weather wag is kind of geared towards is those of you who have boats that are, have the capability of doing about seven or eight miles an hour when you go across the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and that's very important to understand. Uh, I know today, a lot of you have boats that can probably push along a little bit faster than that. Um, that's okay. Uh, the weather wag can still serve you. However, um, as we'll probably talk about later, uh, if you want to use the weather wag for guidance as far as whether it is an appropriate weather window for you, um, you'll have to just slow down a little bit. You'll have to save money, which everyone likes to do, and go a little bit slower in order to take advantage of that weather window. Yeah. And so starting from the beginning a little bit, um, you know, tell us in the most basic terms, since uh, some folks are new to us since it started, what exactly is the weather wag? And this may be you speaking for Tom Conrad a little bit, but you know, why did it start and why was Tom viewing it as so important to find his predecessor, I'm sorry, successor to continue that when his health started failing? Okay, uh, let's see, I'll try to condense this long story. Tom, <laughs> uh, Tom and I had uh, many discussions. Uh, we, we were friends first. Uh, quite frankly, I did not know anything about Tom's weather musings the first time Linda and I went across the Gulf. Bad mistake there, okay, bad mistake. Did not know about the, about uh, Tom's weather musings. Um, but in talking with Tom, what he was trying to do is number one, provide people with uh, uh, information about when those weather conditions existed that would be favorable to our types of boats, our sailboats and our trawlers. Uh, transiting the Gulf of Mexico from Carabel to Tarpon Springs. Um, that, um, that was goal number one. And goal number two was because Tom, Con Tom and Patsy Conrad were from the Panhandle here, uh, they were from the Pensacola area. We live more in the Choctatchee Bay, Destin area. Um, we knew what beautiful cruising grounds we had. And we figured, or Tom figured it out first, and I carried on with his his way of thinking, uh, that people um, were rushing through the Panhandle, Florida, and lower Alabama uh, too quickly. There's lots to see and do here in this uh, area from the 250 miles from Mobile to Caravelle. Uh, so we wanted people to kind of slow down a little bit, not think that they had to get to Caravelle to do the crossing and see our wonderful, wonderful anchorages, wonderful uh, towns, wonderful visits. People, I mean, uh, hundreds of thousands of people every year spend lots of money to come down and visit Gulf Shores, um, Pensacola Beach, uh, Destin, Miramar, 30A, all this area, Panama City. So um, we wanted people to kind of slow down and uh, and enjoy what we had to offer here. Uh, so it kind of was twofold while we while we while we uh, do the the uh, Tom's weather musings and uh, now Eddie's weather wag. Yeah. So by being able to give people a little bit of a preview of what kind of a weather window might be coming up, you kind of effectively got them to not rush towards Carabelle or Apalachicola if, if there wasn't what looked like a suitable crossing for quite some time. And, and those have become very popular parts of the loop. Um, yes. So Tom, I'm not sure how many years Tom did it, but I think it was about five, if I had to guess. I, um, I know you did it for five before taking a two year hiatus because, as you said, life got in the way. What made you decide it was time to bring it back? Well, um, again, I think it was mostly um, people uh, on the forum. Uh, you know, I keep up with the daily forum and I kind of noticed that um, 
as the years have gone by, 15 years, uh, technology has uh, improved greatly. Um, but people were still, even though the technology uh, is available to everyone uh, today to obtain weather information, people don't know how to interpret it. And to go through, quite frankly, Kim, the, the, the stress and uh, the time that it takes to interpret it, interpret uh, all the various weather sites that are out there to figure out uh, when a good crossing is, when you should leave, uh, what you should be looking for. Um, that kind of distracts, quite frankly, from the joy of just cruising. And um, so I decided that uh, we probably needed to uh, get the weather wag ginned up again. And um, I had had several inquiries from people uh, who had done the loop and used uh, the weather wag and Tom's weather musings uh, over the years. And they always wonder, say, hey, you know, are you going to start that up again? So uh, it it's not because of a perceived uh, 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 lack of interest. Um, it's uh, because certainly there is a seems to be a, a lot of interest in in having the weather wag available to people. So yeah, and and for those who aren't aware, Eddie has presented about he actually calls it crossing the Gulf without drama at the fall rendezvous for several years in a row. And he wasn't able to join us this year. Um, obviously he mentioned life gets in the way and he and Linda both have mothers in their nineties that they care for. Um, so we certainly missed having him there, but I do want to kind of set the stage that this would, the, the actual how to cross the Gulf is about a 90 minute presentation. And we did have someone else do a similar presentation this year. That's not what we're covering today um, because it's a different format and a different time frame. Um, but the weather wagon, it's, you know, kind of boiling it down to its most basic form. It's Eddie's interpretation of the weather resources and Eddie telling other loopers whether this would be a good day to go for himself in his boat, which, as we mentioned, is Spiritus, with his crew, which is Linda. Um, so everyone's got to make their own decision ultimately, and everyone's got a different comfort level, um, so to speak. And, and Eddie's seminar, and um, some of you may have seen that online last year, um, really breaks it down into each boat deciding what level waves and what wind speeds and, and you know, a whole bunch of different factors that are going to help you make that go, no, go, go decision. And the weather rag, uh, not to put words in your mouth, Eddie, but it's basically you going through that process and making that interpretation and, and giving just another data point for those who are looking for the right window. Is that how you would best describe it? Yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, what we're, what I'm trying not to do uh, with the weather wag, I'm not trying to say go on this day. What I'm trying to say is that on this day in our boat, our level of experience, our crew and our past experiences, we would go across the Gulf. Um, keeping in mind, this is why Kim probably brings this up. You know, we have a, uh, a classic cruiser. Uh, this boat was made, uh, you know, for for this type of cruising. Uh, well, what kind of um, weather would it be? Would it take uh, to upset us uh, in that particular boat? Uh, Spiritus has four foot draft, which most most uh, uh, trawlers that are out there today that loopers have, they all have about four foot drafts. Um, there's comparisons, you know, the weight. Uh, somewhere around you know 12 to 18 tons uh, is the same. Um, so we'll have the same, the weather will have the same effect on your boat as it probably do, does on our boat. Um, so you can draw those analogies as you read the weather wag, find out about why I decided that this would be a good day versus perhaps the day that, that you choose. And um, again, uh, it's, it's always nice uh, when you're doing something for the first time, which most loopers are doing. They're crossing the Gulf of Mexico for the very first time. Uh, they're unsure as to, you know, what's out there, or whether they interpreted the weather and everything correctly. Uh, I always encourage people, you're the captain of your ship. You decide whether you're going to go or not. But it's always kind of nice to have somebody looking over your shoulder to kind of validate for you that it is a good day uh, or that it's not a good day. So that's, uh, we're trying to alleviate some of that, that stress and concern and worry. 
Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. And as you know, cause you've been there, uh, the Gulf crossing, particularly if you are doing the overnight crossing, uh, tends to draw some of the, the, you know, most fear or trepidation from loopers of any part of the entire route. Um, and I think it's, and I, and I think that's just because of, um, like I think I say in, in our presentations at Wheeler, um, it's because uh, of the unknown, you know, it's the fear of the unknown. And how do you, how do you overcome fear? You overcome it with knowledge. And right. um, uh, that's what we're trying to teach is knowledge of what to look for uh, when you do cross the Gulf of Mexico. Right. And so for boats like Eddie's, um, it is typically an overnight crossing. So cruising at night is also something not many loopers do on a regular basis. Mm. Um, so we're going to talk about who specifically should use the weather wagon in, in, in the way it's going to be presented this season. But there are other options for crossing the Gulf. Um, so I just want to very quickly mention if an overnight crossing is something that you absolutely do not want to take on, there is the option of doing uh, what's known as the Big Bend route, which is typically about three hops that goes, you know, kind of right, al looks like it's right along the coastline. You still have to be traveling pretty far out into the Gulf for parts of that to have enough water. But the, what month is this? The October Great Loop Link um, had an article by Eddie and an article by Robert Creech. Um, and, and Eddie's written several articles about this that we've linked to, but we, there was coverage in the October issue of both the straight across method that we're talking about now and the Big Bend route. So that's a good place to look if you want more information about the Big Bend route. For those going straight across, which I know this from Eddie's presentations because he has us repeat it, 170 statute miles um, is the distance. So for, as Eddie alluded to earlier on, the faster motor cruisers, uh, motor yachts, some of them can do that in a daylight only crossing, which tends to lead to less fear and trepidation by many. Um, and since Eddie's boat is one that does it in an overnight crossing, that is what the weather wag will focus on. So we want to make sure that we're clear about what this weather wag is and what it is not. So along that line, Eddie, who should use the weather wag as one of their data points for crossing the Gulf this season? Okay. Yeah. Who should, uh, who should be using the weather wag? Um, what we've talked about so far is the history kind of of, of uh, Tom's weather musings and, and Eddie's weather wag in the past. But um, starting with this season, uh, very soon, uh, we're changing the weather wag up a little bit, okay, um, for a lot of reasons, and which I won't go into here on the program. But um, for those of you out there uh, listening and watching, um, if you desire to go across the Gulf of Mexico, uh, at night, between the months of November and March, if you're willing to start at the East Pass, that's outside of Carabel, marker R2, and go directly to marker R4 off the north end of Anclote Key, which is near Tarpon Springs. And if you can maintain a speed of seven to eight miles an hour, the weather wag is for you. This is what, uh, this is my target audience. Uh, for those of you that can fit those three criteria, if you will, um, I think you'll find the weather wag will help you out immensely. Now, some of you go slower than that. Others go faster. Uh, going across the Gulf of Mexico uh, fast, if you want to do it in the daylight hours only, make sure that you, uh, your boat can sustain 15 miles an hour or more, uh, and you can do a daylight crossing during that November to uh, through February timeframe. Um, if you can't go that fast, you're gonna have to do an overnight crossing. Um, or as Kim said, do that Great Bend route. That Great Bend route takes about three days, at least three days. And strangely enough, the weather requirements that I teach in, in our seminars are the same for the Big Bend route as they are for going straight across the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. Um, so anyway, those are the people that um, we're, we're targeting the weather wag for overnight crossings, uh, maintaining seven to eight miles an hour, uh, and the route from R2 at East Pass to directly to R4 off Angelo Key. Right. And I, I should also note that uh, since this podcast goes out and it's publicly available, this is a service that Eddie does for AGLCA members. So where you're going to find this and, and, you know, further description, including the coordinates 
for R2 and R4 that Eddie just mentioned. If you go to the greatloop.org website and go to the interact menu, the second choice on that menu is Eddie's weather wag. And as soon as you tap that, you will land on an introduction page that will kind of go walk you through some of what Eddie is saying, but it'll have what he's just said in writing. So you can, um, you know, you don't have to be jotting down R2 and R4 right now. And it will also have the coordinates for those two points. So I just want to make sure that that is clear to everyone. Um, Eddie. And Kim, yeah, Kim, if I can interject real quick on that uh, for those listeners, you say, well, why those two points? Okay, uh, years ago when Tom Conrad started providing this service for loopers, uh, when he was when he was doing Tom's weather musings, um, in order to minimize the amount of time that we spend in the open ocean, uh, especially at night, uh, this is the route that we found uh, was the shortest route, the shortest distance between two docks, normal two docks that loopers would be uh, willing and uh, able to tie up to. Carabelle is the furthest each point, and then going across to Tarpon Springs. And that's why that route is so important. It wasn't just arbitrary. Uh, we wanted to figure out how do we minimize the amount of time and exposure that people have out in the Gulf of Mexico? Because that trip we just described, that Kim uh, just described, uh, that's just in the open ocean. That's a 20 hour trip. Um, right. For those so going at eight, eight or so miles per eight, hour. Eight yeah. miles an hour. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is probably a good spot. Let's take a quick break, play a message from a sponsor, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about how you, Eddie, make this, this, you know, this, this call, so to speak on whether it would be a, a suitable day for you and Spiritus and Linda to cross the Gulf and then publish that. So we'll be back in a minute. Schwartz & Company Yacht Sales is a boutique yacht sales organization and a proud supporter of AGLCA, loopers, and adventurous souls throughout the Great Lakes. We are the exclusive representative for American Tug throughout the Great Lakes region, including the Canadian provinces of Ontario and Quebec. We are very active in the yacht brokerage market on both the buy side and sell side, providing our guidance and resources to valued customers. We also work with shipbuilders, both in the U.S. and abroad, to bring our customers' unique dreams to life. We welcome the opportunity to earn your business. We're back on Great Loop Radio. My guest today is Eddie Johnson. Eddie is uh, just about today, in fact, relaunching the Eddie's Weather Wag, which is a service that he volunteers to provide to his fellow loopers. And it is basically assistance with a go, no go decision based on what Eddie would do with his crew, his wife Linda, aboard his boat, which is uh, Spiritus, which is a classic. Grand Banks trawler. So um, it's it's just another tool in your toolbox, so to speak, as you're identifying the best weather window for your own golf crossing, because really the key to a comfortable crossing is waiting for that best weather window that you can have. So Eddie, tell us a little bit about, you know, when you're preparing the weather wag each day, how do you determine the best night to cross the Gulf? Um, well, I'll preface this by saying that uh, a question that loopers always ask me when they find out that I'm Eddie of Eddie's weather wag is what's the best month to cross. Okay. And those of you out there listening probably want to know that same answer to that same question. And the best month I tell them every time is July, but unfortunately we're down in the panhandle of Florida in the beginning of winter in November, December, January, February. Um, Unfortunately, that's the absolute worst time weather-wise uh, to go across the Gulf. Uh, that's not to say that there aren't uh, any good days to cross. It's just that there are much, many fewer days, good days to cross uh, during those four months. Um, so that's kind of what uh, helps drive the weather wag also is, is helping people determine uh, those days. Um, what I'm looking for every morning when I get up and I peruse anywhere, it just depends on, you know, how quickly I find out bad information, uh, but anywhere from five to six different weather sites online. What I'm looking for is a forecast uh, of winds along that R2 to R4 route that are no more than 15 miles an hour for that entire route. And I'm also looking for 
uh, wave action that is less than two feet along that entire route for a 24 or more hour period. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Uh, if I find it on one website, I get excited. And then I go to another website to verify it. And then if they verify it, I go to a third web website to verify it again. Uh, I use no less than three. Usually, uh, um, I use more than that. But um, again, uh, you know, weather over the Gulf of Mexico is just like on land. Uh, it changes. Uh, so consequently, my being able to say one week from now, we probably will have a weather window is truly a wag. OK, that is. That uh, is not something that is hard in stone that there's going to be a weather window a week from now. As we get closer to that day, say it's a Wednesday, as we get closer to Wednesday, within 72 hours, it becomes a little bit more predictable um, as to whether that day is going to work out or not. So the closer we get to that projected day, uh, the more information, valid information that we'll have. And it's a compilation of not just one online weather site or weather forecast site. It's a compilation of several. Ken? And uh, the, the kind of the, the intro that Eddie wants you to read before using the weather wag that I mentioned is is on the Eddie's weather, weather wag page on the greatloop.org website does list some of the um, best online weather resources to use. And it does list some of them that he uses for the wag. But do you want, uh, and you know, those are hard, they're internet addresses. So you're better off kind of, you know, viewing the site for that. But just uh, what are some of the sources that you use for the weather wag, Eddie? Yeah, um, well, first off, I'll, I'll say that uh, it's just in a way of generally educating our audience out there today, Kim, is that all these online forecast sites get their data, their, their basic data uh, before they plug it into their computer programs, they get it from uh, they get it from the National Weather Service or from NOAA. OK, so the first thing I look at uh, is uh, a, a website called uh, ndbc.noaa.gov. That's uh, NDBC, which means National Buoy Data Center dot NOAA, which is National Oceanographic Atmospheric Administration. Uh, .gov. And what I'm looking for once that page comes up is specifically uh, Bowie 42036. That Bowie 42036 is the only buoy in that whole corner of the, uh, the Big Bend. That's the only buoy that's out there. And unfortunately, that buoy is a, at the closest point along our route of, of, of uh, traversing the the Gulf, it's, it's no closer than 30 miles to our uh, route. So, but it can give us very valuable data. So once I've got that as a baseline, um, some sites that I use are uh, SailFlow, S-A-I-L, Flow, F-L-O-W, SailFlow.com. Um, also use PassageWeather, PassageWeather.com uh, or is another a site that I use. Um, one that I, I also use, but I am a subscriber to it. Uh, as a non-subscriber, you can get some valuable data from it. Uh, it's called Buoy Weather, B-O-U-Y Weather, buoyweather.com, a very uh, excellent <clears throat> website. And that's, that's actually, uh, Buoy Weather is the, the basis for uh, Marv's uh, weather uh, service that he gives also, uh, giving him a little plug. Uh, for what he puts together. So those are some uh, free sites that uh, are out there. And like Kim said, if you'll go on to uh, our, web our website, AGLCA website, and, and bring up uh, Eddie's Weather Wag, uh, you'll, you'll see those, uh, those and some other sites that are available to everyone. Yeah, so all that information is there for you. Um, we are also going to be posting, uh, including this in the November issue of the Great Loop link, which should arrive in everybody's or members' email boxes on November 1st. Um, so a lot of what Eddie's talking about and, and we're talking about today, as well as how to find the daily post for the weather wag, because Eddie does post each day, and also how to receive email alerts when he does post. 
So that kind of leads to a question, Eddie. Um, you mentioned that one of the things that uh, grew a little bit hard on you after five years was getting up at 4.30 in the morning for four or five months straight. Um, so this time around, the, the wet wag is a little bit different. So tell us what time to expect a post and, and why you've selected that time. Sure. Um, what I have tried to promise now, we're going to try to keep to it, uh, but there's reasons for it. Um, it used to be that I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning uh, to uh, put the weather wag together. The reason for that originally was because I wanted to catch, uh, be able to put something out for the people who were going across the Gulf of Mexico during daylight hours only. Um, like I said, that, that gets a little bit grueling after, <laughs> after a week, much less <laughs> three months. After about so, two days for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, not to throw um, the, what do I call the go fast loopers, the people that do daylight only crossings mm -hmm. under the bus. Um, but uh, the, the weather wag is geared towards those of you who are going to be doing overnight crossings. Uh, to do the overnight crossing, I am looking at weather along our route of, of uh, travel from R2 to R4. I am looking for a time frame starting a, uh, at R2 at three o'clock in the afternoon, and that's Caravel time, Eastern time, uh, and arriving at R4 no earlier than 10 o'clock the following morning. So that's the time frame that I am looking at uh, 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 a good weather window. Um, if you go, if you choose to go in the morning from R2 uh, or later than that and arriving later at, uh, at uh, R4, later in the morning, uh, you're going to have to be the judge of whether <laughs> that works out for you or not. But those are the times that I'm, I'm looking at. So the valid times are from uh, starting at three o'clock in the afternoon from R2 and no earlier than arrival time at R4 than at 10 in the morning the following day. Um, the, uh, uh, I, just, I just lost my train of thought because uh, there's something important I want to say about that. Um, but uh, if those of you who uh, are you know, just hell bent on going across during daylight hours only, and I, I can appreciate if you have a boat that can do that, that's wonderful. If you will contact me uh, a day or two prior to your arriving in Carabelle or some of you Apalachicola, um, if you'll contact me a day or two prior to that, uh, let me know what your intention is. Uh, I, even though you're crossing in the daylight hours only, I will uh, certainly take a look at a suitable daylight only crossing window for you as well. But, um, until such time that I hear from uh, Go Fast Loopers, uh, I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and what I plan to do is uh, have that information out uh, no later than 10 o'clock or 1030 in the morning on the day, uh, every day, no later than 1030 in the morning. And the reason that's important is because uh, in completing this information loop, um, the uh, remember I said that NOAA is the basis for all uh, weather forecasting for all this, all these weather forecast sites that we have, private weather forecast sites. Um, they don't have satellites. They don't have buoys. They all get their information from NOAA. Uh, NOAA puts out uh, their uh, forecast around 9, 30, 10 o'clock every morning. And so that's the first thing that I will look at because that is the latest time uh, in the day. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, that is uh, as close to your departure time as I can get. I really encourage you to make sure the data that you are making your decision on is as close to your departure time as possible. And that's what I'm doing for you guys, is giving you the most up-to-date, most recent information. Yeah, and we certainly appreciate that. Just for clarification's sake, Eddie, the 10.30 a.m. goal to post each day, is that Eastern time? Um, that would be... 10.30 Eastern time. That's correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that yep. we're set on that because if I'm not mistaken, you actually live in the central time zone. Yes. I live in the central time zone. Okay. Yep. okay. Just wanted to make sure we had the right okay. time there. Um, so again, thank you so much for bringing this back. I know it's something that loopers really appreciate having. Um, 
just as we as we start to wrap up, I know you talked a little bit about why you're bringing it back and the goals, but you know, what overall are you hoping to add to the loop for people by bringing back the weather wag? What's your goal here? Well, my goal really, and actually Linda's goal as well, because we're kind of in this together, um, really is to 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 pay back um, AGLCA. You know, AGLCA is a wonderful, wonderful organization. I don't think anyone has ever joined would would dispute that. Um, this is one of those things in, that we feel in life is, is where you pay back. You know, what goes around comes around. Uh, our way of paying forward is to provide uh, uh, the benefit, if you will, of Lynn and my experience in doing our, our loops, uh, in traveling to South Florida uh, every winter, uh, are basically our boating experience. Because many of our loopers out there are, uh, there's a lot of them, this is the first boat they've ever owned. So if we can pass along any information to them to make their journeys more enjoyable and especially safer, this is what our basic goal is. So bringing up the weather wag, I think, is a is a, is an it's a needed uh, program uh, so that we can get people across the Gulf without drama. Okay? <laughs> without drama. You are you're right. It is a needed program. Um, we are very thankful that you and Linda are w- willing to share your expertise expertise with the rest of the group and it is um very much needed in today's days and times to have this kind of pay it forward attitude which has traditionally been a very looper like thing to do but nobody does that more frequently um and more wholeheartedly than eddie and linda johnson so we want to thank you for that and thanks for bringing the wag back one final question very important will you also be bringing back brain clutter at the closing of each of the wag posts Oh yeah, brain clutter will be back. Um, I've had two years to uh, gather uh, little known or cared about information uh, in my brain. I, I, uh, I can't remember the, Pythag- the Pythagorean theorem, but there's a lot of other crap in there that, uh, <laughs> that, that is stored that I'll be glad to share. In fact, I wanna uh, share something that's probably uh, apropos here for, for loopers. Uh, uh, it's a quote from Daniel Boone, you know, the great explorer. Uh, from back uh, years gone by. Um, And we are all explorers as we go along the Great Loop uh, for the first time. Some of us uh, more so great explorers because uh, we've never done anything quite, quite so bold before. But Daniel Boone says, I have never been lost, but I will admit to being confused for several weeks. So, don't feel like the lone stranger when you're out there uh, on your boat, <laughs> confused about uh, you know what city you're really near, or or perhaps what state you're in as you traverse the, bay, the Great Loop. Even the great explorer Daniel Boone was confused from time to time. So. Good to know. Makes the rest of us feel a little bit better. <laughs> but that's a great way to close this out, Eddie. We missed you and Linda uh, so much at the Fall Rendezvous at Wheeler. Hopefully, we'll see you at the Winter Rendezvous. And um, until then, we'll look forward to the WAG and its brain clutter each and every day. So thank you for doing that. Keep it safe out there, folks. Absolutely. Thanks again to Eddie and to all of our listeners and viewers. Thank you for joining us again this week. We'll be back next week with another episode of Great Loop Radio. Until then, safe cruising. 